Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with episode 4 of our F123 Breaking Point Let's Play. Yes, we're back this evening once again ready to jump in and learn more about the various and ever increasing amount of characters in this series. If you missed out on yesterday's video, would highly recommend going back and checking it out. Of course, you know, we got introduced uh, to Devin Butler's dad and we even got introduced to a young Formula 2 superstar in Canada. Ali Mayer. I've got no idea as to where the storyline is going or what we should be expecting over the next few episodes. So I'm really, really looking forward to this and hopefully you are as well. Of course, if you're new around here, make sure you get yourself subscribed for daily Formula 1 content, of course. So we'll be back later on today as well with the second of today's F1 My Team videos uh, from the, uh, I think it's... Round four of the year. Where I can't remember where we're going for that one because I haven't recorded it yet. Uh, but anyway, let's jump in though. Uh, chapter five coming up next then. Where are where are we going to be heading and who are we going to be heading with then? As immediately, we get a phone call from Evelyn. Let me guess. You saw the race. Could it be prouder and everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming? <laughs> well, that saved me a few minutes. Guess I'll speak to you later then. <laughs> How are you, Mum? Oh, I couldn't be prouder, Cal. That was one hell of a race. Everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Honestly, the way you're driving, I think we're going to have to change your name. What's here this time? Callie Winner. You've got this in the bag, Cal. Oh, okay. That... That is the kind of award-winning journalism that we really do need right now, but one race at a time, okay? <laughs> that sounds like Casper talking. Is he looking after you? Yeah, yeah, always. Uh, actually, I've got a meeting with him that I'm running a bit late for, so I've got a dash, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, sweetheart. Call me tonight and well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, an introduction then to Callie Mayer's mother quickly before we jump into Chapter 5. But yeah, let, let's see what's going down. While we've been able to keep F1's Connor Sports shop fully stocked, we're getting some negative press regarding the quality of the finish on some of the items. Frankly, it's not up to our usual standards. We've had to issue more refunds than expected, and it's affecting our projected numbers for this year. That is not a good sign. Um, so not not helpful as we jump into the weekend. But we're here at Suzuka, ready for the Japanese Grand Prix. Apparently now, we have really got to try and impress as Davidoff is giving... We're, we're just dealing with phone calls today. Davidoff? Connor, just uh, thought I'd call for a catch-up. Wait, wait, wait. What time is it where you are? Doesn't matter. I wanted a report before the race. Ah, right. I did ask them to send across all the data to you. Perhaps they forgot. I'll make sure to, um... No, 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 I've got it all here. Busy man, Andrea. I don't have time to read all that. H how's it all look? Uh, the car is running well, data's solid. Whole team seems confident, and based on the forecasts, we're sticking to the original tie strategy as we discussed. So, we'll see. Good. And the boys? Keeping to themselves, so no fireworks. Aiden's been a little quiet, but that's usually a good sign before a race. And Devon's... Uh... I've already spoken to Devon. He's good to go. Oh. Right. Well, keep up the good work. Good luck. And I'm sure we'll speak after. He's still giving me incredibly, incredibly bad vibes. But fingers crossed those bad vibes aren't going to come through here at Suzuka. Let's, let's finally get into it. Okay, mate, I need you to push before the pit window opens. Push, push. On it. Well, apparently then, I'm not really getting any cinematics or intros before this one. We're just being chucked in right at the deep end, but we've got to try and jump Bottas a four lap eight. And there he is, two and a half seconds up the road. So first of all, then, we've got homeboy Yuki Sonoda, as it looks like Devon is our bonus objective here as well. So maybe we can try and get up to him. Of course, playing a bit more F123 now. You, you probably noticed the first couple of episodes from this series uh, were the very, very first videos I'd recorded on this game. It's trying to look around the outside of Yuki Sonoda. Nice to see the AI a little bit more competitive down this back straight. Side by side through 130R, and we'll just about swoop through. And there we go. First move has been completed as Carlos Sainz has either pit earlier or is having a nightmare here down in ninth. 
Well, I just said about how Sainz might be having a nightmare. I wasn't expecting, I mean, it is Latifi, but a lap down, six laps in, mate. Um, Japan was also the only race he did actually do well in 22 as well. So, yeah, Latifi clearly not having fun. Right, yeah, Carlos Sainz, though, definitely struggling in this GP. Let's see if we can try and get a run on the Ferrari. Down the inside, we'll have a look. Surely he's going to give up on that one. Yes, he is. Carlos Sainz there knows a battle when he sees it. And now we're right behind our target. That is Valtteri Bottas in this Grand Prix as we wind our way through the Casio Triangle. Try and put the power down nicely on the exit. Can we try and... I mean, we've got the DRS as well. Surely this one should be a done deal. Bottas trying to go for the Schumacher Barrichello style defensive. Another pit stop here at Suzuka. This time it's Aidan Jackson coming in. He's been making steady progress today and Connor Sport need him to. They desperately need some results and they could do without this. And look, there's chaos in that garage. Absolutely, only three wheels on the car at the moment, Crofty. Aidan Jackson looks on in despair. Here comes that spare wheel now. That's a long, long time to wait. Just sat in the cockpit. What is going on down at Connor Sport? Well, the tyre is finally out of the garage and on the car, and Aidan Jackson's back out in the race, but it's a long time in the pit, and that will cost them dearly. What was that? How many places did I lose? OK, try not to worry about that, Aidan. Just focus on the race, get your head down, and let's put it back. Uh, I'm sick of this! I don't know how many laps we've got left to do this, though, but we have got to get on with it here late on in the day at Suzuka. What lap are we on? We are on lap number eight. So Bottas then eight seconds up the road. I'm hoping we are going to be absolutely flying there. Devin Butler still in seventh ahead of him. We have got to get the bit between our teeth. Lando Norris trying to have a look to the outside of Pierre Gasly as we head into the hairpin. And we're just going to have to try and sit and get a run on the exit of the corner there. I think Norris, oh, look at the run we've got. Gasly, like he was standing still there. Lando Norris, not like he was on for a Sunday afternoon stroll, but not quite able to get past both of them in one go. I'll try and see if we can get round Norris to wind our way down through the spoon corner. One of my favorite corners on this circuit then to the inside of Lando Norris. Gonna have to keep using battery though. Got to monitor that between now and the chequered flag. Just four laps to go here at side by side again. How many times are we going to do that today through 130R? But it's another one pulled off. The next up again is Yuki Sonoda. So we're basically back to where we were before this whole story began. Yuki Sonoda then having a decent home race at the moment inside the top 10 and ahead of Pierre Gasly, but not anymore. And the inside will go. Should be able to complete this move. Another robust overtake made. And there is Bottas then just in front of us now. Of course, the target is actually Carlos okay, Sainz in his Ferrari. That's going to make our life easier. Sainz then with issues, so we need to try and get around the pair of them as quickly as possible and close up to Devon. Come on then, Bottas, let's see what you got as we make our way through the S's once again then. Can we try and look around the outside? Yes, we will. We'll find the room. And Bottas, of course, we know just how less aggressive he can be than other drivers there. You know, there's a big kind of rumour, isn't there, around Formula 1 uh, that if you're battling Bottas, you kind of just go for it because he'll jump out of the way. But that's another place game then in this GP. Sainz, I'm sure, will try and defend the inside, but he won't defend it enough. And down the inside will go again. Another overtake made at the hairpin. Devon Butler, three seconds in front. Two and a half laps to go. And look how quickly we've romped up to the back of Devon then in this GP. Just one lap later, clearly these soft tyres are working well. Okay, that combined, we, we, in fact, we got the bit between our teeth around the outside of Devon Butler. It's like he stood still. Actually, you know what? I said that, and now he's trying to fight back with me. So we head down in towards Spoon Corner, side by side with our teammate. Really don't need any more contact with him. And we will aggressively make the overtake there, force our way past him. And now, just over one lap to go, Hamilton getting a run on Esteban Ocon. Head a little bit further up the road. They're going to go side by side through 130R. Happy it's not me for once. But here comes Devon Butler again. You can just see in the rear view mirror. Our teammate all over the back of us. But can't quite keep his foot to the floor through 130R. One lap to go. We should be able to hang on. I was wondering if we could try and get close enough to walk on by the end of this race. But I think we're just going to be a little too far away there. Max Verstappen wins the Japanese Grand Prix just like we saw in real life there. Red Bull 1-2. 
with Charles Leclerc rounding out the podium. Big lockup. So, yeah, exactly the same podium as we saw in real life there, but just pushing to try and get close to Esteban Ocon. But you know what? We've beat out Devin Butler once again. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Well, Aiden, I'm sure you already know what I'm going to ask. That pit stop looked like a nightmare. So what on earth happened today? Well, I think, you know, it's it's difficult just trying to throw the team under the bus. I think every race has its hiccups. Is probably the safe response here. Um, th there's only so much sass and drama I can provide inside F123. Yeah, well, we know that every race has a hiccup, so you can just never tell when it's going to happen. You just got to be ready and roll with the punches. I guess on the plus side, a mess up like that means that this mistake will never happen again. Well, there is a lot of talk on social media about whether Devon is actually getting preferential treatment by the team. So do you think, is there any truth to that? Or is it an unfair assumption? Quickly, before we say that, though, have a look at the cameraman who's doing our interview here. I'm not, I'm not saying Davidoff, Davidoff's wife might have cheated on him, but just just, just have a look. I, it, it seems awfully Devon Butler-esque there. But anyway... Um, his dad may be fun in the team, but we're treated equally. Of course there is. That is a brave choice to go with. Uh, Devin could use a bit of preferential treatment with his current reforms. I'm absolutely going with that response. Let's bring on the sass. <laughs> uh, Devin struggles to keep up sometimes, so maybe he could use a little preferential treatment. Uh, no, I'm joking. Whatever helps Devin helps the team. It's, it's fine. Well, Aiden, the list seems to get longer. Car reliability, you and Devin bumping wheels, and now issues in the pit lane. Huge mountain problems at Connor Sport. Has there been any talk at all about what the team might do next season, considering that you and Devon just don't seem to get along? Oh, I mean, this is a big choice. I'm open to offers for next season. Who knows where I'll end up? Who knows what the future will bring right now? I think we've, I think we've got to go with a safe option. Let, let's not try um, and see how many offers we'll get from other teams if I've made a comment like that and then no one wants us. Yeah, I've been thinking about next season. But who knows what the future will bring? At the moment, it's all about Connor Sport and bringing in as many points as I can. And finally, I've got to ask you about this. It has been reported that Mercedes have agreed a deal for George Russell to play a small part in the latest Throttle Zone movie. What do you make of that? I think George Russell, he'd be, he'd be all right in a movie. I reckon his acting skills actually would be pretty terrible. Um, but George has a lot to offer outside the world of F1. No, I think I cannot wait to see the film, just, just so we can give him some stick. Yeah, that sounds like a great opportunity for him. The Frogs own movies, they're, they're amazing and they have such a massive fan base, so it's, it's great to see them acknowledge F1 in the way that it should be. And I think George is the perfect pick, so can't wait to see what he does. That's great, thank you. Well, there we go, though. Back at our team garage once again. Then let's see what's going on in the world of social media, then. Stuck in the pit lane, an article there. Uh, what are Red Bull saying? Oh, Verstappen winning two races in a row. And we've got Davidoff. Bre breathe in, people. Let's see what he's got to say. Talk to me. About what? You saw the race, right? What is there to say? Thought you could do with blowing off a little steam. <laughs> What is even the point in wasting any more energy? If it's not the car, it's the team. If it's not the team, it's the car. No one seems to care how much effort I'm putting into all of this. Which is why you need to double down. Listen, I promised I wouldn't say anything, but the top three are talking, Aiden. What? What? They've already reached out to us. Looks like there might be some last minute negotiations on the cards, but keep that to yourself, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. No doubt there'll be some wrangling. You're contracted for another season, but your um, tenacity has been noticed. Well, uh, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything you're not supposed to know. I hate to admit it, but Connor Sport can't keep up with you, Aiden. Just do me a favour, would you? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. What is it? I need you to push as hard as you can to get as much out of you before I lose you to a better team. Can you do that for me? Of course. No problem. Good boy. You know I'm here whenever you need me. Speak soon. He speaks so weirdly, does Davidoff, but I'm absolutely now expecting a sneaky response and then to uh, see his son 
go to the big team that we were promised to. Maybe, maybe I predicted uh, some chapters down the line. But anyway, let's head then into chapter six and see who, where, what's going to be going on. You saw it, right? The pit stop? How am I supposed to deal with that? I know. I want a chance to prove what I can do, though. In a top tier seat. I deserve it. I've heard there might be interest. I just... I can't stay here. Okay. Well, what would you do? So, what advice did you give him? Well, I told him to try to stay calm, see out the season, and then go to the final team meeting. See if that changed his mind. And where were you at this point? Oh, I was uh, busy getting Cali ready for the final race of the F2 season. Right, well, here we are, though, ready for the final race of the Formula 2 Championship here in Abu Dhabi. Cali has got a chance at the title with Trident. Let's try and go out there and crown her world champion. As before we do that, Evelyn's back on the phone again. I know where you're calling, but um, make it quick because I have to keep my head in the game. Of course, darling, but it wouldn't be right if I didn't call to wish you luck. Thanks, Mum, but luck really won't do anything. I need a clean strategy and just to keep my head, that's all. Look, which you do and you will. Just breathe, Cal, okay? You've already put the work in. Now all you need to do is get out there and do what you always do. Yeah? <sighs> yeah. You're right. Who knows? If you bring this one home, I may even call your father to gloat a little. <laughs> Mum, not now. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to lighten the mood a bit. <laughs> I know. You'll be watching, right? Oh, just try and stop me. Race fast, honey. The final race of the season now well underway here in Abu Dhabi. A few different drivers in contention for the F2 Championship. But here's the favourite, Cali Mayer. She's been so consistent this season, so fast. My money's on Mayer for the championship, no question. If she can finish high enough, the title belongs to her. How am I doing? It's looking good, Cali. Come on, a podium should clinch this for us. Podium it is. Right, let's go get it then. Currently sat down in ninth place there with five laps to go of this GP. We've got yellow flags out somewhere around the lap down in sector three. But yeah, Ralph Bosch on first car on the old hit list. Podium might be the objective, but you know what? We, we want to finish the year with a win, surely. If you're going to crown yourself champion, surely, surely you want to be finishing it with a win there. But yeah, Abu Dhabi, though, of course, on the new updated circuit. Or no longer the new updated circuit, I suppose. Trying to look around the outside of Ralph Boschong immediately. Hopefully they've changed that horrible bump that was on the inside apex through there. Maybe, maybe they have. Right, CJ and Arubala less than six seconds up the road. There is a big, big fight going on for that final podium place. Now is Teo Ford Chair that suddenly snookered it away. I don't know exactly what the championship permutations are looking like here, but it, apparently we've got more than two drivers still with a fight for the crown, but yeah, we're definitely not as overpowered as we were back in Sandwalk a few races ago, if you remember in the last episode. But what can we do here, and how much are they going to battle? Jan Ruvula into the pit lane for some reason, so that's going to be a freebie for us then as we cross over half distance. Do we need to pit in this race? Or is that just Dan Ruvula going for a very weird strategy? Either way, we're up into seventh. And now, right behind Jake Hughes as well. As Teo Ford Chair, we can see, is still a little way further up the road. But, yeah, we've just got to try and continue closing in. You can see Fittipaldi, of course, my teammate, now in our My Team series. You know, cheeky plug if you've been missing out on those. Would highly recommend going and checking them out. But Jake Hughes now right in front of me. You can see, even with the slipstream and the DRS, identical power units of course identical cars apart from setup down the inside of Hughes will go and surely this one can be a done deal just pinch him on the apex and we're through next up Vesti we might actually a bit of a compromise run on the exit I think he just got a bit caught out over the curbing 
the second of the ART drivers in this race. Fittipaldi currently in an ART sandwich, but looking which later we're able to get on the brakes. Try and switch Vesti off the corner, which we absolutely will there. And Fred Vesti, clearly spooked by that one, jumped out of the way, and we're into fifth. Fittipaldi then not able to get the power down out of the final corner, side by side with the Charoos as we head back down towards turn one. Oh, he's going to go very, very aggressive on the defence, but we'll try and put the power down. And we are now in the prime position. Eyeing up Teo Porchera in this final podium place that we need for the crown. As much DRS and slipstream as we possibly can from Amory Cordial as we head up the back straight. Teo Porchera, you can see we're both gaining in on him. The effect of the double toe was Cordial. He's a lap down. Not going to stop him trying to send it up the inside, though, of me, apparently. Luckily, he bails out right at the last second. And now, Teo Porcher, I don't know whether he is one of the drivers in this championship hunt. But if he is, things are about to get very, very upsetting for the Frenchman King. Second, of course, in real life. 22. No, there's contact. Porcher breaking earlier. But I never anticipated there. We get a warning for a collision with him. And we even pick up some front wing damage. So breaking point might deliver the drama. But apparently, I'm trying to add to it. Logan Sargent now. Next up in front of us is Felipe Drogovic, of course, leading this race. So surely he is one of the drivers that wants to win this crown. But Sergeant, whoa, just between us. Less than two seconds now up to Drogovic. But I'll try and get around the Carlin first, of course. Can we get to the inside? Yes, we can. No more front wing damage, please. Now, two laps to go. 1.7 seconds. Carlin and Felipe Drogovic, no DRS to defend himself. Surely this one... He's going to be a done deal. We've been on an absolute tear this race, and we're just a lap and a half to go. We'll have a look to the outside of Drogovic. Much, much later on the brakes there. Maybe just a little too late. We give him the room. Whoa! <laughs> These Formula 2 cars really do slide around on F123. I can't wait to do a full season with these cars as well when the 2023 DLC drops. But we are now into the lead. We're just over a lap to go. And this is absolutely enough to crown ourselves champion. Well, Cali Mayer then has done a fantastic job throughout the entirety of this Formula 2 campaign. Trident isn't always a team you associate with winning inside Formula 2. But this year, they have done enough. And Cali Mayer rounding our way through the final couple of corners in Abu Dhabi. We don't know what most of our results are. We did know she won, of course, back at Zanvoort a few races ago on an unorthodox strategy. We only needed P3 today to crown herself as champion. But as we wound our way through the final couple of corners here in Abu Dhabi, the championship can only be won by one. And round in the final corner, Trident are on top and Cali Mayer wins in Formula 2. Yes! Yes! Woo! Come on! <laughs> yes, Cali! That was amazing! Congratulations! You As many predicted she would, a star is born. Kali Mayer becomes the first woman ever to win the F2 Championship. Historic. <laughs> well, I mean, someone had to be the first. But I just hope that this shows that talent can get you as far as money. And what about your dad? Has he called to congratulate you yet, Kelly? Nope. Next question. Hey, Kelly, Kelly, what's it like being a woman in motorsports? We're sure everyone wants to know. I don't know, John. What's it like being a man in journalism? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hot-headed? <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. But you know, that's, that's kind of what you need in a driver. Let's not forget that Cali taking the championship was a big deal. You know, for, well, for the sport, but really for everyone. And for you? How did you feel? It was one of the proudest moments of my career. It was the first time I mentored anyone. Yeah. I was a little sad to be moving on. So, had you already told Kelly about your new job? Yes, yes, of course. And I told her, you know, how I wished that I could take her with me. But she understood. And Aidan, had you told him? No. No, he was, um, he was too busy. Busy? 
preparing to tell the team that he was leaving Connorsport. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know Aiden had something he wanted to say, but first, I have a matter I would like to address formally. It is no secret that I have been spread a little thin <laughs> this season. I mean, I own the team, I run the team, it's, it's a lot, okay? Which is why I will be stepping away from the principal role next season. I'll still be pushing Connor Sport Racing to be the brand we know it can be, whilst the new principal will be laser focused on performance and results. And we have already found a man to step into that role. Kasper. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, this is a big step up for me. I'm really looking forward to see what next season brings. It's truly an honor to be on board. I am sorry for the dramatic nature of the announcement, okay? Humor the man who pays you. <laughs> we all look forward to working with Casper, yes? Good. Then let us continue. Aiden, you had something you wanted to say? The floor is yours. Uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I just wanted to say, <clears throat> um, thank you, everybody, for all your hard work this year. And I'm really looking forward to next season, especially with Casper at the helm. Well, the story takes another twist then. Kasper Ackerman is going to be leading the team away as we head into 2023, while the 2020 season exposed him to the harsh reality of life as an F1 team on the Formula 1 grid. Connor Sport Butler Global Racing, that is a mouthful of a name, uh, looks set to bounce back with a newly invigorated team, now helmed by fan favourite and former driver Kasper Ackerman. Did Casper being around affect you going into the 23 season? I have bigger things going on than Casper. Do you have any regrets about 2023? Anything you'd have done differently? No. No, I'm in a good place now. Besides, what's to uh, regret about being the story of the season? Big words there from Devin Butler. And look at that. Now, apparently, for the next episode, we are going to become... The man himself, so very, very excited uh, to jump in to that car as well then. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure and leave a like, get yourself subscribed. Yeah, and we'll be back tomorrow with Chapter 7, the first time ever we live inside one of Formula 1's most narcissistic men's heads. That is going to be interesting, I think, is the, is the political way I'm going to describe it. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.